Hello and welcome to another new video of Soul Computer Science. So today I want to show you how to manage the YAML files in a smarter way. So as you can see here, this is a normal YAML file. We have uh, two main uh, structures, two main objects here, templates and cache. Uh, the cache object contains two strings like this. So relative directory and file name. And then uh, the templates object contains um, see here a string and a list each item of the list has three elements so it's nothing uh, unusual here one of the most uh, standard ways to load uh, this file is to use a pyaml you can find this of course in the um, pip uh, repositories and it's very easy to use and uh, once you load um, a file uh, using pyaml you get a, a dictionary so for example in uh, the official documentation we can read an example like this. So this is a YAML file in a form of a string. And once you uh, load it, you get a, a dictionary. There is this uh, object here. And this is a nested dictionary. But this is not the only way you can uh, load a YAML file. In fact, there are more ways and I'll show you an interesting one. So you can think of it this way. Uh, what if we start from these two elements? So the two elements in the list and consider them as a single object. So you can uh, call this a feed type in uh, this specific example, and you can create a class like this. So these are data classes, which are uh, special types of um, Python classes, which are used uh, to hold uh, data. And uh, in this example, for the moment, you can ignore everything after the type specifier. So for the moment, you can think that this um, this stuff doesn't exist. Just consider the um, the variables here. So here there are three variables: type, alias, and relative path, which are these ones: type, alias, and relative path. And uh, all three are of course of um, type string. So you just specify it with uh, a type specifier like this. And usually you don't need this stuff, uh, but then I explain why I put it. And so uh, once you specify it like this, uh, you have a specific object. And uh, these two are instances of that object using the correct terminology that this one is a class. So, okay, so if we go back to the YAML file, we see that um, this list is inside um, this object called template data. And uh, everything is inside uh, this other object called templates. What you have to do? is to create another class like this called templates, which corresponds templates is this one. Okay. And inside templates, there is the root dear value, which is here. Okay. And template data, which is this one. So as I said uh, before, template data is a list. And so what you do, it's to specify it like this, so a list of feed type. But feed type is this one. And so uh, by doing like this, we have solved the um, problems of how to uh, specify all this data. And of course, if I wanted, I could add another list element like this. Okay. For example, yeah, I could call it um, RSS since we are talking about uh, feeds. But then we also have this uh, other object here. So if you go back to the file, we need to specify another class. It's called cache and uh, it has two elements and uh, they are two strings. And so it's simple because you just have to do first element is a string and second element is a string. Uh, the only thing you need to be sure of is to use the same uh, names everywhere. So in the YAML uh, file and in the Python implementation file. And uh, since the file contains uh, the two main objects, so the templates object, okay, you can specify it like this. Templates is this one. So a variable called templates uh, with type templates for the capital T. And then um, the same thing for the cache object. So um, variable called cache, 
of type cache, which is this one. So the constant object is our root. Let's say we have a tree and this is our uh, root object. And uh, we can um, subclass it from uh, this uh, other class, uh, which is called data class yamlixin, which comes from a library. Uh, as you see here, I imported from this library called uh, Mashumaro, which I'll now show you. Okay, so this is the GitHub repository of Mashumaro. And uh, you can also install it from uh, PyPy. Yeah, if you read it here, uh, in Python, you often need to dump and load objects based on the schema you have. It can be a data class model, and I'll show you what it means. A list of four parts generic classes or whatever. And it says it's super quick, yeah. Anyway, if we um, go to the YAML section, because it also supports other um, outputs and inputs, so JSON, TOML, and other, this is what I did in the code. So you can um, read from YAML and output to YAML as well, once you have the data. So it's quite useful. Okay, so at the end of the file, what I did here is to create a new um, constant. So constants is this one. Then I call the from YAML method. And then uh, you just need to read the YAML file. You can use, uh, of course, all the normal open uh, Python function or use pathlib like this. So just read text and etc. Then finally, just to show you, uh, because it's a sub-module of another program, you can print it in a way that it's more readable. And now I'll show you what happens when you run it. So I'll run the sub-module directly like this. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's a little bit of space here, but I think it's readable anyway. So we have the constant object, which is, corresponds to the all of the file. So we have two main objects, templates, as I said before, and cache. And uh, of course, they, are, they have the correct type, as I showed you. And here there are the three um, list elements. So feed type, where the person is atom, atom, and RSS. And then they have all the values. Okay, so if we add the code here and we try to print some values, so you can just do print. So instead of using... Um, a normal dictionary like you would with uh, PyAML. You can do something different here. So print uh, uh, constant, const, const, because this is the object is called const. With this constant, we have templates. So you have to do dot templates. Put there, for example. Okay, so this is our first value we're going to print. And then the second one, we can do. Um, template data. Okay, and let's say we want to print the last element of the list. So minus one. Okay. And as you see here, okay, so this is the first print we did. And this is the last element of the list. Remember that I added um, RSS to the YAML file. So it's this one, this is the last element. And this is the root deer print as I did here. So just templates, templates is this one. So as you see, it's very convenient to use this kind of um, data structure. And now I want to explain the thing I did here uh, because by default, this library doesn't check every type, but just some of them. So for example, if in the YAML file, I try to change, for example, this string to an integer, like this, let's see what happens. Okay, so we get an error. We get a value error, of course. Uh, fill type of uh, type string and fill type as in valid value one. So, yeah. If we, if you don't put all this uh, stuff here, which calls um, a function I'm going to show you in a moment, it doesn't check it, but that's just for some values. Uh, I think that for integer it works fine even without this code. Okay, so let's see this uh, callback, I think it's called. If you go to the, okay, so I created a separate file just for this. Okay, so as you see here, this is the valid str function, which uh, you need to put if you want to check really the 
correct uh, data type and uh, yeah raise value error like this and yeah about data classes which is a uh, core functionality of that uh, uh, very small program you can read more of course on the python documentation but here's another practical example when you have a where you have an inventory with the items uh, so uh, they created a class called inventory item and so the item must have a name a price and a quantity and of course uh, um, there is also the total cost so uh, number of uh, units available and the unit price and you just multiply and then you put in a, you put it in a method like this and when you use a data class like uh, like this and like i did an init method is a uh, automatically created and um, you see all this boilerplate code is uh, just added automatically you don't have to do it by hand every time and let's say this is the most important point of data classes i think the most important use is just to save some code before closing the video i want to show you that you can uh, transform uh, these data classes to a normal dictionary as well it's very simple so you just have to do print bars const like this and then you run it oh i forgot i need to change the string back okay and then you run it and yeah i think it's this one okay so as you see it's um, a dictionary p print dot p print okay so cache templates okay so here they think they remain with their um original uh class they have not they have not been translated recursively as i can as you can see here okay so let's see what happens if we print uh, the last element like this as dictionary okay so we got the administrative path and type so so alias, relative path, and type. Yeah, it just clears out, but yeah, it's here. This um, does it for today. I'll uh, leave everything in the video description, all the links. Uh, you'll also find a blog post um, which covers this in detail. And uh, thanks for watching. And if you found this useful, put a thumbs up. And uh, as always, bye bye.